Today we're going to learn how to enlarge a photo so you can put it on your watercolor paper. So let's get started. Today we're going to take a photograph and we're going to make it larger. This is how to scale a photograph. You can scale it larger, you can scale it smaller, whatever you want to do, but you're going to become the uh, projector, so to speak. I was asked specifically how to do this. What you do first is you start with a colored photograph, turn it into a black and white photograph, and then you can get started. This is a photograph of a rose, and this is the final piece. This is what we're going to get to, and I'm going to take you step by step into how we get there. And here it is all marked up. But again, I'm going to show you how to do this. No worries. <laughs> all right, so here we go. All right, so the first thing you have to do is decide on the format. I've decided that I want this to be a rectangular format. So I'm going to um, take my watercolor paper and draw a dia diagonal from corner to corner. I'm also going to do the same thing on the original photograph. Corner to corner. And that's with a Sharpie. Now you're not going to do it with a Sharpie. You're going to do it with a light pencil because you're going to erase these guidelines later. And this will work whether you want to enlarge a photo to a larger size, whether you want to keep it the same size, or whether you want to uh, make it smaller. It, you, you basically are in a, uh, a projector. <laughs> you're basically making your, yourself a projector by doing this exercise. All right, corner to corner. So I do the same thing on the watercolor paper. And then also make a mark halfway vertically up and down and halfway horizontally up and down. And I'm going to do the same thing on the original photograph as well. So bear with me. I didn't have a flat surface to work on. So, um, you know, you got to make do. As you know, in art and probably in your studio as well, you just have to make do. But things usually work out if you just, just keep working at it. So the guidelines are almost in. Remember what we've done here. We've taken the original photograph, we turned it into a black and white, we've drawn a diagonal from corner to corner, and now we're drawing a, a vertical line in the middle and a horizontal line going across. And we're going to do the same thing on the photograph, but we're using a Sharpie so you can see it on the photograph. Now, I'm not opposed to projecting or using a light box or anything like that. Believe me. <laughs> but you get to the end of the painting the way you get to the end of the painting by any means necessary. But I was specifically asked, how do you draw a flower? How do you not lose your way when you're doing a rose in particular? So this is to answer a specific uh, viewer's question. So that's what I'm doing today. This is, I am not, and I never, in any of my instruction, am I telling you to do it the way I'm doing it. There are a million different ways to do it. You pick the way you want to do it. There's no right or wrong. All right, so the guidelines are all in. Now this is the only part that is a little bit complicated. I'm going to mark, and you won't be able to see, I'm marking those individual squares with numbers. One, two, three, and four. And I'm going to do the same thing on my paper. One, two, three, and four. Now I turn my paper upside down. And I'm going to do the same thing with the piece of paper that I printed the uh, photograph out on. I fold it up, showing you it again, one, two, three, and four. I fold it into squares. And then I turn those squares upside down so that number one matches number one. And now I start to do my drawing. So you can see square number one is, the, is on the left, and it's also on the bottom left. And remember in the photograph, it was on the upper right. So what I've done, I really have turned myself into a projector, because basically that's what a projector does. It takes the image and flips it <laughs> around on you and um, gives you the, the uh, mirror image of it. So that's what I'm doing here, going upside down, the flip. So in order to do this, I needed some guidelines. It's not just enough for me to have that diagonal. Sometimes, that, sometimes that's enough, but for me it wasn't. So I decided I would take each individual square, my one, two, three, and four, and in number one, I'm breaking it up into uh, quarters. And I'm gonna do the same thing, and I'm freehanding right now, because why not? All right, 
freehand with a sharpie. Now I'm looking at square at the squares, and I'm going to do the best that I can to draw what's inside those individual squares. Remember, it's upside down. So this lets you get into the side of your brain that isn't concerned with is it this right or is this wrong. All you're doing is looking at lines and shapes. And more than anything, looking at what is around those lines and shapes. All right, so there's square number. I'm in square number one, and I've done the first uh, quarter of it. Where most of the action is happening. That's most of where the rose is happening. The rest are leaves around the back. All right. Eh, not too bad. And let's see what happens now. Now, um, the rest of the squares. I'm not too concerned with making sure that these leaves are all correct because I'm, you know, going to take artistic license later anyway. So, go ahead and draw some of those negative shapes. All right, I'm pretty much done with square number one now. So I turn it and go to square number two. Now remember, this is number two, but it's upside down. I've already keyed it, so I turn my paper upside down, my watercolor paper upside down, and also my paper that I'm copying from upside down. But I need some other guidelines. I need to uh, break it up into quarters. So that's what I did again. And you can see most of the rows is in that upper left-hand corner. So that's where I'm going to get busy right now. And the rest is going to be, um, what do you call it? leaf, leaf shapes. So I keep working around. All I'm concerned about is what's in that upper uh, left-hand corner of square number two. And you can get this in pretty quickly. It doesn't have to be perfect. The whole point of this is not to have it be perfect because if you spend, if you're spending over an hour on a drawing of something, when you go to paint it, you're going to be so unhappy because you're so tight by then. You know, all you can think about is, oh, if I mess this up, it's going to be a disaster. You know, if something only takes you about, I don't know, five to ten minutes to draw, you're much less invested in it, so you're more willing to kind of uh, stick your neck out, so to speak. So that's the point of this. Now, you, like I said, you can always use a projector or um, a light table as well. But that was not the question that was asked. The question that was asked was, how do you freehand and do this? So that's what I'm showing. All right, so that square is pretty well done inside that larger rectangle. So you get the idea. Now, I think I'm going to stop the editing here, and I'm going to have it go faster. Or I think I'll wait a minute. I think we'll go to square number three, and then I'll speed it up, just so you see the process one more time. <laughs> I think it's the upside down part that can is the place that can trip you up. Remember, if you're watching this on YouTube, there's also you can touch the screen, and three little dots will appear. And you can either speed this up, or you can slow it down. So for those of you who are in agony, touch those dots, and you can speed it up to four times as fast. And, and uh, bada bing, bada boom, you'll be out of here. All right, now I just have, all right, so that's the end of square number two. Got, so I've done number one, I've done number two, now I'm going to move up to number three. Up to number three, and remember, it's an upside down number three. It wasn't upside down when I started, but it's upside down now. So here we go. Again, I'm going to break it up into quarters, just freehanding it that way. And I'll freehand it with a Sharpie as well and you know the rest. So I'll speed it up from here. All right, see you on the other side. All right, here we are going a lot faster, but it's still the same thing. Doing that upside down square number three, and then I'm going to do upside down square number four. Okay, now on to number four. Draw in my quarter lines. And there just isn't that much to describe in, in number four. And now we'll turn it right side up and compare it to the original photograph. And here I can make some final adjustments, which I'm doing.
So that is how you can go ahead and scale a drawing. You can make it bigger, you can make it smaller. Uh, the only thing you have to be careful of is if you started out with a rectangle, make sure that you finish with a rectangle. If you're going to take a rectangular thing and turn it into a square, you're going to have some proportional issues. So don't do that if you, if you can avoid it. And then you erase those guidelines and then you can get started with painting. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value, mix for color, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.